और डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे विल सी वॉट डे वी मीन बाय क्वांटाइजेशन नाउ बिफोर वी गो टू सी द क्वांटाइजेशन प्रोसेस द थ्री प्रोसेस इज वॉट वी डू टू कन्वर्ट एनोलॉग सिग्नल इन टू डिजिटल इज फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो फर्स्ट वील बी हैविंग अवर एनोलॉग सिग्नल विच विल मैसेज और द इन्फॉर्मेशन यू कैन कॉल इट that is sampled sampling is done samples of that signal is taken by a sampler those sample can be your instantaneous sample or your flat top sample or natural sample anything but samples are to be made according to the sampling theorem following the nyquist script so you will make samples of your of your analog signal then those samples will be having certain values those amplitude values what those samples are having will be made will be made into a fixed standard value by the quantizer the quantizer will make those random amplitude values of the samples into a known standard fixed level of amplitude levels by the quantizer so the quantizer is going to make those samples to have a fixed amplitude then those fixed amplitude level whatever value you get will be converted into digital data by the encoder and hence we can say that analog signal is converted into a digital signal or in terms of binary data by this three processes so in this sampling and quantization will be important and in that quantization what actually we do what is that quantization process that is what we have to see in our today's topic called as quantization now here students if this is your analog signal this is your analog signal and that analog signal is converted into samples these are the samples this is first sample this is second sample this is third sample this is fourth sample and this is fifth sample so you have converted the analog signal into samples and the samples are following the sampling theorem where the time whatever you have given time period between each sample this is called as ts and if you take fs that is sampling frequency it has to be at least equal to or greater than twice the highest modulating frequency that is what we have studied in sampling theorem and that is will be the basic uh, criteria what you have in your nyquist or criteria also and that has to be maintained so that in the end we can recover our analog signal back that is the other thing but now here we have made samples now these samples okay with respect to time they are discrete with respect to time they are discrete so time is discrete but with respect to amplitude with respect to amplitude they are a continuous with respect to amplitude they are continuous okay that means you don't have a fixed fixed what you say standard value of amplitude they are in in between intermediate values they are going to have so here we can say time is discrete time is fixed for the samples but the amplitude is continuous it is not discrete still now this samples whatever samples we are going to have now this samples we have to quantize we have to convert them into discrete value by the help of quantization so now here students we have shown the same analog signal we have shown the samples and upon that we have shown levels these are the levels so for simplicity we have taken four levels this is the first level this is the second level this is the third level this is the fourth level these are the levels of quantization so the first level in our analog value we can take it as 1 volt second level we can take it as 2 volt third level we can take it as 3 volt fourth level we can take it as 4 volt and if you see that the quantization levels how you make or depends on how many levels you want to make depends on what binary data you want at the output 
say for example if you want two bit uh, binary or data at the output then you can have two raised to two that is equal to four levels if you want three bit binary data at the output then you can have two raised to three that is eight levels if you want four bit at the output then you can have two raised to four that is 16 levels so this number of levels will uh, depend how many binary bits you want at the output what is your bandwidth and how much quantization error you want to minimize based on all those things this number of levels will uh, decide now here we have shown four levels so if there are two bit of binary data at the output then you can take four levels so the first level can be taken as 00, 01, 10, 11 so here I have shown you 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, 4 volt and these were the samples what we got after uh, making the analog signal into a continuous wave samples where the samples were of discrete time but continuous time. Now here we have to around the value of the amplitude to a standard level. Now say for example this first sample if you see this first sample if you see it is somewhere showing up to 2.1 volt 2.1 volt or 2.2 volt somewhere there it is little more than 2 volts now that should be rounded off to 2 volt that has to be taken to 2 volt the amplitude of that should be fixed to 2 volt because we are having fixed values 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, 4 volt so that amplitude should be taken fixed as 2 volt similarly if you see the second wave second sample if you see the second sample, the second sample is somewhere around 3.6, 3.7. It is above 3 but little less than 4. Now this has to be rounded off to 4 volt. This has to be rounded off to the next because there is minimum error over there. That has to be rounded off to 4 volt. If you see the third sample, the third sample is exactly at 4 volt that you can take it as 4 volt. If you see the fourth sample, the fourth sample is just little more than 3 volt, just little more than 3 volt, so that you can take it as 3 volt. Then you can take the fifth sample. Fifth sample is, is around 2 volt, that you can take it as 2 volt. Now all these samples which were having intermediate values as 2.2, 3.8, okay 3.2 something like that they were rounded off to either 1 2 3 4 standard value so we are having the standard values fixed values so here what will happen is the sample will have discrete time also and discrete amplitude also time also is discrete and amplitude also is discrete and now this first sample is 2 volt second sample is 4 volt third sample is 4 volt fourth sample is 3 volt fifth sample is 2 volt so that decimal points have gone you have rounded off to some fixed levels okay now these values these values of the amplitude whatever you get are called as quantized values of amplitude quantized values of amplitude now these values whatever you get should be converted into binary data or a, a digital data by the encoder the encoder will just convert this standard values whatever you have got after quantization into binary data or digital data that what happens when you convert analog to digital okay now in this quantization process what we have done we have taken those same samples we have superimposed them on some levels depending upon the concept whether you want 2 bit at the output, 4 bit at the output, 3 bit at the output, 5 bit at the output depending on that we have made this number of levels and then seeing the amplitude we have decided how much each level should be and depending on that we have marked those horizontal lines which were the levels now looking at that level whether the amplitude is near to the upper level or near to the lower level you have to round it off to a particular level that means you are going to get a fixed value these are called as standard values fixed values are amplitude those values you have to assign now here students, if you want to see what was the quantization error, then you can see that if you see this amplitude, this amplitude was 2.2 volt, around 2.2 volt here, 
and that 2.2 volt we have taken it as 2 volt standard now there is a difference of 0.2 volt only. now that difference of 0.2 volt will be called as quantization error if you want to minimize this type of quantization error then you have to increase the number of levels but if you increase the number of levels the number of data bits will increase then again we have to speak about bandwidth that will also increase so that is all you have to compromise you have to see your system and then you have to or decide about it now here what we have done is say for example the first amplitude the actual value of the amplitude was 2.2 volt say 2.2 volt the actual value of amplitude was 2.2 volt this was actual value then you have quantized it for 2 volt you have quantized quantized for 2 volt there is an error of 0.2 volt error is 0.2 volt and the binary bit which is associated with it for this 2 volt you are associating 0.1 uh, sorry 01 so 01 will be the binary data binary data okay now this is what you are going to say this is what the analysis of this particular amplitude will be its actual value was 2.2 you have quantized for 2 volt there is an error of 0.2 volt and the binary relation which is associated with it is 01 so that is what you are going to send that is what you are going to encode and send okay that means this 0.2 error whatever was there if you want to minimize that then you have to increase the number of levels and if you want to increase the number of levels then you have to think about the data whatever you are going to send at the end. then you have to think about the bandwidth of your channel and of your system then that all factors should compromise at some stage and then you should decide what should be the number of levels okay so now this is the way we do quantization of analog samples and we come to a quantized value and that quantized value then will be uh, made into a, a digital signal that is what we send as analog to a digital signal from transmitter to receiver now students we will see types of quantization now in this basically there are two types one is called as uniform quantization and the other one is called as non uniform quantization in a uniform of quantization the spacing between the levels the spacing between the quantization levels will be same as we have seen in our last our diagram also when we quantized the spacing between the levels was same if the spacing between the levels is same then it will be called as uniform quantization and if the spacing between the levels is not same they are on some logarithmic relation type when there is the data is compressed and then they are going to do the spacing now in that case it will be called as non uniform quantization where the spacing between the levels is not same okay further a uniform quantization can be further divided as mid thread type and mid rise type or depending upon where the origin is going to be where the origin of the levels is are going to be or depending on that we are going to have mid thread type and mid rise type of uniform quantization and now here we see the first type of uniform quantization now we all know that in a uniform quantization the step size the spacing between the levels that is the step size will be equal now here we have shown the first type which is called as mid thread type now here if you see the x axis is the input level or the quantizer input and the y axis is the output level or the quantizer output now here if you see the input is shown as s by 2 3s by 2 5s by 2 Here minus s by two, minus three s by two, minus five s by two, where s is the step. Okay, and for that you see when the input is s by two, the output is rising to one volt. When the input is three s by two, the output is rising to two volt. Okay, even here if you see when the input is minus five s by two, the output is rising to minus one. when the input is minus 3s by 2 the output is rising to minus 2 okay 
But then why it is called as mid thread? It is called as mid thread because if you see from minus s by 2 to plus s by 2 in this, the output is 0. The output is 0. The output is going to rise at s by 2 and minus s by 2. But before that, for this step, for this step size, the output is 0. And the origin lies at the center of the thread. So this, this horizontal line, the step is called as thread and the origin lies at the center of the thread. So it is called as mid thread type of uniform quantization. Students, now we see the second type of uniform quantization and that is called as mid rise type. Again, if you see here, the x axis is the quantizer input level and the y axis is the quantizer output level. And we have taken the points as on the x axis as yes, two years, three years, where yes is the step size. And on the y axis, we have taken as yes by two, three years by two, five years by two, here minus years by two, minus three years by two, and minus five years by two. Now, if you see the output uh, behavior here, the output uh, behavior at zero point, if you see, the output behavior is going to rise from minus s by 2 to plus s by 2. This is a rise part. This is a rise part. Again, it is rising here at yes. Again, it is rising here at 2 years. Even here, if you see, it is rising here at minus years and it is rising here at minus 2 years. Okay. If you see the center point, zero point, there is a rising part and the center of the rising part is zero. So it is called as origin at the mid rise, at the mid rising point, the origin is there. And that is why this type of quantization is called as mid rise type quantization. So this is the second type of uniform quantization.